as you were saying that, I just feel led to, to share this. This was not part of my plan, but, um, you know, uh, and I don't have a plan, so I guess it is the plan. Um, we came to Eustis, and I, and I know that we weren't planning on coming to Eustis, but, um, you know, the problems with the other building, and we couldn't stay there anymore. One county, two, because of what you see before you, there's too many of you to fit in that building. Um, and then there was way too many kids. I'm just glad the cops didn't show up. We would have been thrown in jail for all the code violations. We didn't have enough room for our children. And that's a great problem for a church to have, isn't it? Um, but we came here, and many of us didn't like this building, and many of us didn't like the city of Eustis, and many of us didn't know why we were here. Um, but I was able to share, uh, I was able to hear somebody read this the other day, just out of the blue, we read a men's Bible study there at, uh, is it True, True Value or Ace Hardware or whatever in Mount Dora? And, and this is what, um, what the guy read, and I was like, man, that's, this is for us. And so I want to I commend this verse to you for those that wonder why. Why, if many of us are from Tavares, why are many of us from Leesburg, why are we in Eustace? Why are we here? And I just want to read this to you. This is in Jeremiah verse, uh, chapter 29. You don't need to go there. I'm just going to read it. Just listen up. It says, this is what the Lord of heaven's armies, or some translations will say that the Lord of hosts would say, the God of Israel says to all the captives he has exiled to Babylon from Jerusalem. Do you ever feel that way? <laughs> that we were that group? Like, we don't want to go to Eustace. That was kind of like us, you know? Um, but this is what he says to those people that maybe it's, he says it to us that maybe he sent us here. Maybe we didn't want to go here, but maybe he sent us here and it was for a reason. He said, build homes and plan to stay. Plant gardens and eat the food they produce. Marry and have children. Then find spouses for them so that you may have many grandchildren. Multiply. Do not dwindle away. And work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it. For its welfare, the city's welfare, will determine your welfare. And, and, and the reason, the thing that jumped out to me is that I've always felt like if we were a healthy church and, and we were flourishing, then Eustace would flourish. And I had it all wrong. If Eustace flourishes, we flourish. See, I, 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 like most people, think of myself first. I think of us first. I think of me first. If I'm doing well, you're doing well. If we're doing well, the city does well. No. We've got to consider others as more important than ourselves, right? Can someone say amen? amen? Okay, that means if the city is doing well, then we are doing well. If the city is not doing well, then we are not doing well. It doesn't matter how full. We go to seven services, filled. We could have people get baptized every week, and it wouldn't matter if our city that God sent us to is unhealthy. And so it's our job, our joyous job, I pray, to bless the city and ask the Lord to do something here through us. Um, that's side note. Anyway, um, so I didn't really, I had my, I had a, a sermon in ready for, you know, Romans chapter 9 and, um, you know, that's, and I think the Lord is good because I don't want to preach that chapter, man. I've been putting it off for 10 years, so amen. We're broke, yay. All right. Um, so, um, but anyways, when we started this church like four years ago, um, you know, I, I'm sure I'm not the only one. I just, I, I really felt like the Lord, I believe that the Lord wanted to use our church to, to, to really reach out to a, a certain people that really were hurting and broken and that they just needed the gospel and they needed Jesus. And, and you know, I look across this room right now and I see all of you and you're that person. The, the, I don't know of one person in here. There's only two people in here tonight that I, I kind of don't know. And, and so with the exception of those two, or maybe I guess it's four, five, five, Amen. every one of you, every one of you, I know your stories and you know mine, every one of us was that person, broken and hurting, didn't really want anything to do with God, never wanted anything to do with God, and if you had something to do with God, you lost interest and you didn't want anything to do with it, you didn't want nothing to do with him, but somehow, some way, God brought you back. 
through this church. I, be I believe with all my heart, and I still do, that God wants to use our church to do something special. I believe that ever since I, I saw what he did, and I've said this before, but I'll say it again, that when he chose to dump that little expression of scumbags welcome into our church, rather than the other th this thousands of churches across the, this, this world, and he could have dumped that little idea that allowed that church to share the gospel with 250 million people. He could have shared that with anybody, but he didn't. He gave it to us. He gave it to you. And I believe that he's, he wants to use this church to make a big statement for him worldwide, not just in the Golden Triangle. I know I'm crazy, and a lot of you think I'm totally crazy, but I believe that. Like, I, I've stood up here so many times, and I've said that, and I, I'm telling you, I mean what I say. Even though you guys drive me insane, I still believe that it is you that God desires to use to share the gospel with the world. I do. And, and that hasn't changed. We've had amazing things happen through this church. I've lost count, it's probably my negligence, I shouldn't say probably, definitely my negligence that, what's up chef? And uh, I lost count how many people have been baptized at this church. It's in excess of 150 people. We've had people give their life to Christ. We've had so many people baptized. Next week we're having another baptism. There's a rumor that there's a second. I don't know, I'll let you know. Come expecting that, okay, expect the second. <laughs> it's been great. We've helped a lot of people who are in great need, just with some needs, like, you know, I need gas, I need food, I need electric, I just, I need, you know, and, and, and through the generosity of you guys, we've been able to help people in their a tremendous time of need. And so it's been good, you know? And I never thought that, you know, any time, at any time since we started this church, I always thought that we would flourish. I never thought we'd be here like we are now, gasping for breath. And I, you know, so that's kind of why, you know, I'm very emotional. I got a lot of stuff I'm feeling and thinking and what I'd like to do to fix it and what I, you know, I want to scream and, you know, all that kind of crazy stuff. And so I'm just trying to work through it all. But Dan kind of, you know, he let the, the cat out of the bag a little bit about the, about the money situation. And I, again, I don't, I don't like talking about money. I don't. But you know, the, that my, I talked to Kyle today, and he just happened to be studying it, that the Bible talks about money over 2,200 times. Now, we all believe this, or at least we say we do, right? We say we do. Don't kill anyone. Okay, I got that. But when it comes to money, well, you know, like, he doesn't talk about don't kill people a whole lot, not compared to don't let money be your God. And there's a real reason for that, because he knew that's going to be, you're going to be so susceptible to that. And so it's just as negligent on my behalf when I ask for forgiveness that I don't talk about it a lot because that's not helping you. In fear of having you leave because you don't want to hear it, I've cowered and I've led you down a bad path because I don't teach you what you need to know, which is money is the Lord of your lives. Many of us, I'm not speaking specifically, but generally speaking, okay? And so I, I, should, I should have done better. But here we are gasping for breath. I... I just want to kind of, um, I want to elaborate a little bit on what um, Dan has mentioned. Um, and and, I, and I, he mentioned about me and my family and, and uh, you know, I don't want to talk about that either. Um, you know, it's hard for me to sit when I'm talking, so I'm sorry. But, um, and for those that are here for the first time, I was going to call, some of you I knew were coming and I was going to call and say, you might not want to come tonight, but like Dan said, our church is a family, you know, and so if you're going to judge our church on whether our band sucked or not, then don't come. You know, I, who cares? We're a family. Like, we're just a bunch of people that are trying to get right and love each other and love the Lord and just trying to seek after Him and, and get some help and live better lives and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, this is a church. <laughs> people just kind of hang out. We're going to talk. We're going to pray. Um, so anyway, just... Here, here's, here's, your, here's your church you chose to step into tonight. Welcome. Um, everyone always talks about that. The one time I ever came, the guy talked about money. Well, here you are. Awesome. 
So anyway, I, um, we don't talk about money much, but here we are, honestly, we're at, um, we used to have like nine, there were times we hit $10,000 in the bank, and it was neat because when anyone came to, to ask for help, we were able to just do it, and it was really awesome. I know all of you love to help people, and that's a great thing to be able to do when they came knocking on the door and they said we needed this, and we could just do it. It was awesome. That was great, you know? We're supposed to be that way. We can't do it anymore. Um, over the last 10 weeks, I looked at giving. I try not to look at it because I don't want to... I don't want to look at anyone's giving, especially because I don't want to look differently at you. I just want to take you at face value, you know what I mean? Um, but I, I, I went there, and, and I looked. Um, over the last 10 weeks, um, our church has brought in $10,794.93. Now, to any of us in this room, I know that's a lot of money. To me, that's like lotto. Okay. Um, but just so you can understand where that goes... Um, our rent is seventeen fifty. Um, salaries, I, you pay me two thousand dollars a month. You pay Kyle eight hundred, and you pay Katie fifteen dollars a week to watch babies. So uh, twenty eight sixty is our salary. Uh, our electric bill during this last ten weeks um, has been four fifty. It's been two two times, but you take the two of them together, it's four hundred fifty dollars. Um, trash is seventy three a month. Uh, Comcast, so we can have internet here so that we can have video and, and things of that nature um, is $91 and insurance is $63. Um, what people probably don't think about is uh, miscellaneous stuff, toiletries. Every time you blow your nose, it costs money. Um, I cost this money a lot. I cost this church a lot of money. Um, I'm sorry. Every time you go to the bathroom, it costs money. Um, Batteries for microphones and guitars, uh, coffee, got to have that, right? It's imperative, it's going to be a ministry, you have to have coffee. It's the, the 11th commandment. And, uh, but all the fixings to that, the creamer and sodas and waters and um, children's decor, we decorate the thing upstairs for the kids so they can have a good learning experience as well. Business cards, um, helping people, whatever it is, um, we average probably about $400 a month just from that stuff right there alone. Um, now when you take all that and put it all in one big pile, that's fifty-six eighty-seven a month. Fifty-six eighty-seven a month is what goes out. What is required to go out just to exist. Our average over the last ten weeks has been one thousand seventy-nine, which means in the last so that means in every month instead of fifty-six eighty-seven going out, we're bringing in forty-three sixteen. So as you can see, what's happened to our bank account is that it's just gone. And so at this point, we have, le we have about $1,600 left. Our rent was due, I guess it's due today, of $1,750. We don't have it. I won't get paid. Um, I, you know, I'll deal, whatever. But um, without talking about me, it's not about me. It's really not about me. But it's about us. Um, on a very shallow level, Dan did say this, and I will reiterate and it's about character. We said we would do this. That we believed in the message that we were sending out to the world. And that we would fund that. And that you would take care of me. And you would take care of my family. And I asked you that before we came to this building. If you would take care of that. Before I sign my name to a lease. And we're not going to be able to fulfill that the way it is. And I begged you, don't hang me out to dry. <laughs> and I'm about to be stuck on the, on the line. I don't want to be stuck with $1,750 a month for the next 12 months. I can't do it. So I'm asking you not to let me do that. Um, every month, we're $1,371 behind, as it sits now. Now, that means 304. I'm just going to break it down so you don't, not overwhelmed. It's $342.75 a week. If there's 50 people here, what that means is $6.85 per person a week. Short. It's not monumental. It's actually less than what we said before. We said 11 bucks. 6.85 a week. That's a McDonald's meal. And I'm just, I'm asking, I'm asking you to just think about these things. So I think what's happened in our church is that we've become very, very complacent. 
And, and so these are the brass tacks of it all, but I want to get off of that for a moment. And I want to, I want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about God and your relationship with God. Because that's all that really matters. I can sit here and shun you and tell you how you son of a gun, you left me hanging out there to dry, you know. Who's going to pay this freaking lease? You know, I, you know, whatever. That's the old Moses. He's really close by, but he's suppressed, you know. <laughs> 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 Don't praise him yet. It's not, he just got started. Um, but we got complacent. And, 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 and see, what happens is, is, is we come in, and, and, and so I'm just going to be very honest. This, here's, here's what happens. Um, and, and I disguise it in preaching, hoping you'll hear it. But sometimes you don't. So sometimes you just got to hit someone in the face, right? Get in their grill. When you don't come, you're not helping anything. When you find other things to do other than to come to the church you say you are committed to, and you don't bring with yourself all of your gifts, the church that you say you love struggles. We can't help people that are in need if we don't do as God has instructed us in the Bible. In Acts chapter 2, I've mentioned it so many times and you haven't got it. When people got saved and they fell in love with Jesus, they shared all that they had so that those that were in need could be provided for. And see, we've, come, we've become complacent thinking that it's okay to just blow it off to go fishing. So here's the brass tacks of it all. When you blow it off to go fishing, you have not come and encouraged your brothers and sisters in Christ. And you have not come and brought your gift, your financial gift, to provide for those that are in need. And I would venture to say, here's a night of honesty, and please give me that. Would you guys give me that, please? You're hanging me out to dry, so I, I earned it, right? The Bible says every week you put aside a little bit, a portion of your income. Don't try to do it all at once. You know what that means? That means if you're going to blow off church, you take your offering and you hold it aside. And when you come back, you make up for that which you slacked on. Just because you didn't get entertained that week, that doesn't mean you withhold your cover charge. I know this stings, but this happens all the time. And I don't want to be that church. You see, the, 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 the Lord that we serve, he said that he is, he is looking to strengthen those. The eyes of the Lord go back and forth across the earth looking to strengthen those whose hearts are completely his. He's not here to, to bless and honor your unfaithfulness and your lack of trust if, he, if we're going to be that church that, that sends the message of the gospel and hope out to the world, then it has to have impacted us enough that we would at least be obedient to what we already know. I know that I sound like a pest sometimes when I get on you for blowing off church. Do you guys realize how important it is? Does anyone truly realize how important it is to gather with your brothers and sisters? To encourage them? To love them? To, to pray with them, to help them when they're in need? Do you guys realize the importance of it? Getting together with your family is not something that you kind of do when there's nothing better to do. Hi there. How's it going? Good, good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> You're in for a treat. <laughs> Let me give you, I don't know you, but let me, give, let me ask you this. <laughs> Put your on the spot. Take a guess what we're talking about tonight. Jesus. <laughs> that is, that's the Sunday school answer. <laughs> what do you think we're talking about tonight? Have you ever been here before to one of our services? So what do you think we're talking about? Uh, relationship with Christ. Ah, you're the best. Okay, we should be. And we are talking about that. We are talking about that. We're going to talk about it, okay? Um, I got off. I got sideways. Um, but here, let me, let, me, 
let me just say this. Um, for, the, for the world to see something beautiful, um, let's start with obedience. Let's just start with obedience. Let me, let me, share, let me share something. And I, again, I didn't have this plan, so I'm just going as it comes, okay? Um, this is in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We're all hurting. We're, we're struggling people, right? No one in here is rich. I know that. That's what it says. Because a lot of you think that you can't give. And I'm telling you right now, the reason why you can't give is because you don't give. Amen. The reason why we repeatedly, month after month, week after week, struggle to make ends meet is because you won't give. And the reason why you struggle week in and week out, month after month, is because you don't give. See, our, our natural instinct is to gather and then give what we can. And God's like, no, give what you can and then I'll help you gather. Nobody wants to do what God says. We want to do what the world tells us. But listen to what the Bible says, because you're not alone. Chapter 8 of 2 Corinthians says this. Now I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the churches in Macedonia. They are being, they are being tested by many troubles. Can you agree? Anybody here? Amen. Yeah, right? And they are very poor. Anyone? Amen. Come on. But... They're also filled with abundant joy. They're filled with abundant joy, which has overflowed in rich generosity. For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it of their own free will. They, didn't, they weren't coerced. No one twisted their arm. Listen to this next part. It's amazing. These are dirt poor struggling people that we all can relate to, right? And it says... It says, this is, in, this is like totally insane. They begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift for the believers in Jerusalem. These are poor people that are struggling week in and week out that begged that they could give their resources away to help other people. They didn't think of themselves. They thought of others. They even did more than what we had hoped for their first action was to give themselves to the Lord and to us just as God wanted them to. Now this next section is definitely about us and I believe our church is beautiful and I think that the word of God speaks of your church tonight. So we have urged Titus who encouraged your giving in the first place to return to you and encourage you to finish this ministry of giving since you excel in so many ways in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, your love for, from us. I want you to excel also in the gracious act of giving. I'm not commanding you to do this, and I'm telling you that right now, I'm the same. I'm not commanding you to do anything. But I am testing how genuine your love is by comparing it with the eagerness of the other churches. And then the motivation behind it is not guilt or coercion. Here's the motivation behind your generosity and your willingness to give freely that which the Lord has given you. You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. How many in here? Honestly, let me just show him. Are you saved? Has God shown his grace on you? Right? You know it then, right? You, you deserve, you are absolutely spiritually and morally bankrupt every one of us including myself and now you stand before the Lord spotless blameless and without fault it's amazing and it's because of that that we give it says you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ though he was rich yet for your sake Patrick for your sake Jimmy for your sake Jessica for your sake Vernon for your sake for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. That's why we give. That's why we give and that's why, I don't know what to say, that's why we give. 
It's not a matter of, of trying to keep the building open. I can meet anywhere, you know, it's no big deal. It's about your heart. It, it's, it's about who you are in Christ. What has he done to you? Do you recognize what he has done for you? And the people in the Bible, in the, in the book of Acts, they realized what he had done for them. And so when they realized what he had done for them, they were like, you know what? I just want to give away every single thing that I have so that other people can feel what I'm feeling, dude. This is insane. This guy just walked through the wall and hung out and had dinner with us. You guys got to, you, you, you need to know about my Jesus. Like, I need to tell you about, and so whatever it takes, you need my car, take it. You need my house, take it. Whatever it takes, just, I want to, I want to give my whole life to this. Because Jesus gave his life. That's where, that's, God has to work on you there. I can't, I, I'm just a dude. I can't say anything that's going to make you, you know, but see, what's happened here in our church, I just kind of watched it over time, is that we've become a church that feels like it's someone else's job, that withholds from God that which is his. And as a result of that, we all hurt because we can't help anyone. Our city will hurt because we won't be here. And he can't work in you unless you will let him. In, in the scriptures, in, in Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, this is what God tells us. The reason why you're broke, the reason why you can't give isn't because you don't have enough money. The reason why we're not flourishing and, and, and instead we're gasping for breath, it's right here. So please receive this tonight. I am the Lord and I do not change. That is why your descendant, that's why you descendants of Jacob are not already destroyed. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. Now return to me. That's popular around here right now. Return to me. We have become complacent. Let me, let me give you, and I'm going to read on. Let me give you a microcosm. This one's a little stingy, and it's probably not highly biblical and, and spiritual, but let me just tell you what I'm talking about. Every single week, Katie goes shopping for the drinks and stuff like that at the church. And every single week, probably 30 to 40 drinks exit that refrigerator. And every week, I collect the money out of the box, six, seven bucks. What is this, guys? Are we just thieves? I mean, this is, this is terrible. I'm supposed to be encouraging you, but sometimes truth. We're friends, right? So I'll just tell you the truth. What are we doing? We've become a church of takers instead of a church of givers. We, we can't be that way. Who would want to come to a house like that? You know what I'm saying? We should be just giving it all away for the good of the, the glory of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And with this 40 sodas out of there, there should be 50, 60, 80 bucks in there. Right? Because we just want to give. We just want to give. But look what it says. Now return to me. And there's a promise there. And I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you ask, how can we return to you when we have never gone away? Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes to the storehouse, so there will be enough food in the temple. If you do, says the Lord, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. This is the creator of heaven and earth, the one who spoke and the planets came out of his mouth, and he's telling you, test me in this, as if. Come on, as if. You're struggling in your finances is not because you're not putting in enough hours, because you avoid that plate when it comes by, and you say, not me. I don't have to do that. I give my time. Bull. 
This is not about your time. It's not about your singing voice. Park it in a chair if you think it's about a singing voice. It's not. It's about bringing that which God has given to you so freely and investing it back into the kingdom of God that you might be able to pass on the good news that saved you when you were bankrupt and save somebody else. That's what it's all about. And look what happens. I'll pour it out like crazy. He says, try it. Put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant. This is all agricultural stuff, but put it in your own life, right? Put it in your own life here in, in, in Eustace. Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord. Then all nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight. Listen, when, when we are a people that are like the, the book of Acts, when they're just going, I'm all in on this thing. Take it all. Let's use it all. Let's spread the gospel to the world at all costs. Whatever it takes, I will give my very life for this. Right? The world will look at that and they'll go, you are blessed. I want in on that. But when we withhold, how can he strengthen our church? How can he magnify our voice beyond the walls if we won't even let him in our own wallet? Come on, guys. Come on. I don't know what's going on here. But listen, I love you too much. I love you all. I know every single one of you, and I love you all too much to see you struggling all the time. I'm gonna, here's the transparency. And this is the part most people don't want to hear it because it sounds bragging. I am so not bragging. Listen, I gave up a hundred thousand dollar a year job for this to make twenty four grand. Twenty four grand does not even come close to my bills. Not even come close. And listen, when you give me two grand, I tithe back two hundred of it. I'm still eating, I still have gas in my car, I still have a roof, my second mortgage of 83 grand, gone, my mortgage is up to date, I eat, I have a shower, I have a bed, he, look, he said, seek first the kingdom of God, and I'll take care of your needs, and I'm living proof before you right now that it works, I tested him, and he came through, and I'm begging you, because I love you, please stop hurting yourself, and give give, give, and break this curse that is upon you. That's what I'm begging you. I'm begging you. And listen, I don't want to play church. I don't want to come in here and, and just sing and pray and preach and go home. I want to see lives changed by the gospel. I want to see people weeping and crying and tearing up and praising the Lord and repenting of sin and saying, please beg, I beg you, please dunk me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. And that can happen right here if you let, if you let him work in you first. He has to change your heart. There has to be a returning to the Lord. We were once on fire for the Lord in this church, and we're not anymore. And we're wet wood, and I'm asking you to fan the flames of your faith. Begin to, to get on your knees and to pray and to beg God to forgive you and, to, and repent and turn to the Lord. Listen, we listen to this James McDonald thing on Tuesday nights for the men, and it's so true. You had a crisis, and you came to Jesus Christ. Because you knew you couldn't be saved on your own. You finally realized it. And, you, and, and, he, and, and all of a sudden you said, yes, I'm in. But you know what we need? We need to return to the Lord. We need, we need, we need a crisis too. And look, God just gave us one. We're broke. We can't pay the bills. I can't eat this month if it keeps up. Like, that's a big deal, right? So we think we're, everything's going fine. We talk about how many people used to get baptized in our church. Forget that. What about now? See, we think everything is okay, and then all of a sudden, like the guy says in, the, on the, in, the, in our video, and all of a sudden, God drops a bomb on your life, a boulder. This is a boulder. But it's a call not for shame, like you're probably feeling out of me because I don't know any different. But it's a call to return, to rededicate your life to the work of the, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to spread across the earth that they might know him and love him and serve him and be saved by him. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. The building doesn't matter. The chairs don't matter. Nothing matters except souls. Come on. Seriously, like no more complacence. I don't want to hear any more complacent amens. 
Amen. Come on. Seriously. Pretend you're in a Packer game. Go crazy. Let's get enthusiastic once again about what God has called our church to do. Listen, when, 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 you, when you're allowing the, the, the Holy Spirit of God to work inside your heart, you don't worry about whether the rent's going to get paid. Like that's, that, we flourish. When we open up our hearts to the, to the, to the, to the Holy Spirit's working, we, we, we don't worry about you know what I'm saying? You don't, we flourish as a people. And when that happens, look, the city flourishes, the people flourish, the nation flourishes, the world flourishes when the Spirit of God gets to work in people. We allow it. It's time to turn back to Him and let Him work on us. This is what I'd like to do. <clears throat> this is what I'd like to do. I'd like to do what we don't do here. This is going to sound crazy when I say it, because we should. Let's pray. Amen. Let's take, I don't, even, I don't care, I'm not going to look at the clock. I refuse to look at the clock. Let's just take some time to pray. We, listen, it doesn't matter how much I, I, I talk, I could quote scripture till the cows come home. It will do nothing. Unless you personally, personally say, God, I have sinned against you, and I repent. Work in me. Revive my heart once again for you. And that's what I want to ask you to do. I want you to do that for a while. Is that cool? This is what I want. I want you to ask God to do a work in you. Okay? Then, and then after, after we're done with that, if you notice, we haven't taken an offering, which seems crazy when we have nothing. Okay, I'm gonna, we're not going to take an offering. We're gonna, I'm not going to pass any ba baskets around tonight. You know where those boxes are by the door. You know where the computer is. During this time, I want you to ask God to point out places in your life that have gotten complacent, where you need to be revived. Okay, and, and this, is, this is what I'm asking of you. If that manifests itself in, in helping financially, fine, great. Whatever it is that he tells you tonight, I am begging you, I am begging you as someone who desperately loves you. I'm begging you, please respond to it. Do not say no to the Spirit of God. It will not go well for you, and it will not go well for us if you suppress him. Whatever he tells you to do, I beg you, please do it. Okay? So let's just take time. I don't care if you want to lay on the floor. I don't care if you want to sit and kneel down to a chair. Look, all bets are off. Do whatever you want. I don't care, but pray but pray. I'm going to start us off and then I'm going to get quiet and you just take some time and you pray. Listen, this is, a, this is serious business now. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where God gets the work done in, the, in a person's heart. This is where God gets the work done in the church as a whole. This is where God gets the work done in a city, in, in the golden triangle, in the state, in the nations. This is where it all happens right, right now. Not on the evangelism field, right here in the heart of the believer because he is searching the earth back and forth, back and forth his eyes go, looking to strengthen those, you, whose hearts are completely his. Father, where in my heart, and start with me, where in my heart have I said no to you? Where have you knocked on the door of my heart that I have not answered? Please point out that spot in me that I might repent.
going to get quiet. I want you to just ask, ask that question of God, of yourself now. And over the next few moments, I'll offer something else to you that you can ask him about. And we'll just pray together. Bible tells us that confessing our sin to one another is healthy and so you just keep your heads bowed it's okay but I just want to confess to you now what God has pointed out in my life I know that since this church started many of you were attracted to this church because you saw in me an excitement for Jesus and then I neglected you because I didn't share that enthusiasm with you. I haven't poured into the men of this church. I've, I've withheld that joy. I've withheld what God has given me from you. So Lord, I ask for your forgiveness there. And men, I ask for your forgiveness as well. And there's men in this church that I know and love. And I ask you to hold me accountable and keep my feet in the fire. Lord, have, have I become a consumer Christian? I, you know, I, I stand up here with my microphone every week, you know, the pastor, and I, you know, it's assumed that no, I wouldn't be that, but am I? Have I, have I truly given all like you asked me to? Have I withheld from you, Lord? Take a few moments and ask that. Lord I'm just going to spit out whatever I believe he gives me now for you so how about the cross have I treated my salvation that you've given me have I treated it common has my life displayed back to you Lord that I believe that what you've done on the cross for me is common I truly understand the depths of your love? Do I ever slow down enough to stop and think about it? To ponder that great love? So, God, this is what I'm asking now for, for all of us. That you would permeate our heart right now with a fresh, new awareness of just how magnificent your love is for us displayed on the cross at Calvary.
have tremendously blessed our church. When, when this church first started, I mean way back, it was five people in my living room. They're all gone. We've been through, I think, seven locations in eight or nine years. We had nothing. No denomination funding us. No building. No nothing. Help us to realize that what we stand in today, not just the building, but in this group of people right here, with all the things that are here, all the relationships that we have, it is truly a miracle. Would you help us to appreciate it as such? thing Lord and then it will get quiet for a, a period of time I know tonight's always all been about what you're to do in us but there's one last thing there's one last thing for God so loved the world that he gave his one begotten son and whosoever should believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everything that we do here, it's, it's all because you love us so much that you came to save. So whether we're going out and evangelizing or putting money in a box or cooking food for someone, I don't know how it all manifests in individual lives, but what I'm asking you now is would you give all of us a broken heart for the lost? <laughs> would you just destroy all the things that keep us from giving you our whole lives. And Lord, I don't care if this church closed. If you would do that in us, it would be worth it. give you a few more moments before we sing to our God to just one on one to slow down don't think about what your dinner plans are and just do some one on one just you and the Lord and I don't know what it's going to sound like I don't know what it's going to look like just take a few moments and talk to him about whatever. And whatever he's telling you to do tonight, I beg you, please, do it. For the sake of yourself, for the sake of your family, 
for the sake of your church, for the sake of your city, for the sake of his good name. You guys don't have to stand if you uh, don't want to. If you want to keep praying, I would actually kind of encourage that. Um, but one thing that was kind of just on my heart as Moses was talking all all night um, is something that's been on uh, me and Austin and Grayson uh, just got back from a camp out in Alabama called the Ramp, and uh, we both felt that the Lord was speaking to us and He was telling us. You know, how can, I, how can I operate in you fully if you won't fully give yourself to me? And, I mean, it's, if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Like, I mean, I play football and I always tell football stories. I'm not going to make fun of for it, but whatever. Um, like, coach would always say, you know, you only play as well as you practice. Uh, if you give 50% in practice, you're going to give 50% when it's, when it's Friday night. And it's like with church, if you're only going to give Jesus 50%, he's only going to give you 50% back. If you, won't, if you won't bless the Lord, he's not going to bless you. Um, Mom Allen's always uh, talking about uh, how biblically, you know, tithe is a set amount. It is 10% that you set aside of your first fruits before you do anything. You set that money aside for the Lord and says you are cursed if you do not tithe and I'm kind of at a, a little bit of a, a, a battle I've been hearing some stuff um, about a friend of mine told me you know when Jesus came and he died for our sins he broke all the curses that were in the world and so he's like I don't know if Jesus will curse you for not tithing but I strongly believe if you do not bless the Lord with your money he's not gonna bless you back He's not going to give you. He's not going to give you what you won't give him, and I guess that in itself is the curse. But um, we're just going to sing. I'm done now. Uh, we're going to sing a song called "Thank You God for Saving Me." Um, it embodies pretty much everything that Moses was talking about, uh, and we did not even plan to sing it until about whenever we got done playing music earlier. So we're just going to play that for you guys right now. Oh, 
rock of salvation My hope is built on nothing less Morning by morning Lord, how great is your faithfulness I called your name and I called your name You heard my cry out of the grave and into life my heart is yours my soul is free thank you God for saving me thank you God for saving me Thank you, God, for saving me. cross you suffered once for all you made a way Jesus in victory you rose you made us all your own and we are saved you gave your life you gave your life upon the cross you suffered once for all, you made a way. Jesus in victory rose, you gave us all your own, and we are saved. And thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. For saving me. Come on, sing it out. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. saving me your name you heard my cry and down of the grave and into life my heart is yours my soul is free thank you God for saving me thank you God for saving me thank you God for saving me
tell him in your own words, just thank him. I'm so thankful, God. I'm so thankful, God. And you gave your life. You gave your life upon the cross. You suffered once for all. You made a way. Jesus in victory rose. You made us all your own. Now we are saved. Sing thank you. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. I'm so thankful. Thank you, God, for saving me. For saving me. I called your name You heard my cry And doubt of the grave And into life My heart is yours My soul is free Thank you God For saving me Thank you, God, for saving me. Come on, sing it out. Thank you, God, for saving me. time just the voices we're gonna go I called your name and no thank you God here we go and I called your name you heard my cry and doubt of the grave and into life my heart is yours my soul is free thank you god for saving me come on as many times as you want to thank you god for saving me Save me from myself. 